Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tober here on this Monday. Let's talk some mountain weather. And as expected, a very quick hitting cold front moving through Colorado. Front's probably already down here, but it raced in overnight through uh, the front range of Colorado coming out of Montana, Wyoming. Uh, on this very fast north flow, it dusted the front range and we picked up anywhere from one to four inches. I saw four up there at Loveland Ski Area. Nice to see that but this is a very temporary feature in this winter killer high setup that we've got uh, for the west let me show you satellite so this is water vapor slightly different uh, color scheme here but you're still looking at the drier air where you see these darker colors and these yellows these oranges that represents drier air your moisture is in the whites and the greens so essentially there's our front you can see some of the brighter whites sliding through the front range of Colorado but then dry air coming in very quickly behind that um, still looking at this high pressure really dominating most of the west with the flow being sent way up to the north into parts of Alaska right now keeping the west warm on the warmer side of all of this let me show you my uh, bullet points here's what I'm expecting now overall things versus yesterday took a, a drier turn um, and you'll notice that right away with some of these numbers, a drier turn, unfortunately. So we've got the winter killer through 22nd, the high pressure, um, and this fast north flow. And we saw the evidence of that this morning. Now, there is one cold front. It looked like in the last couple of days we might have two cold fronts during this 23, 24, 25 time period. Now it looks like it's mainly going to be one. Now, it will bring in colder air, and it will bring in some snow, but it doesn't look as robust as it did um, the last couple of days uh, so that's still on the menu but i had to curtail or not even curtail but just shave some of the numbers way down you can see it here in the 15 day snow forecast mammoth one inch that's it for 15 days Vail at six so that's down snow mass at 10 park city alta both down way down three maybe four inches over the next 15 days if this holds if this pattern holds you know with this front coming in 23 24 25 even yesterday it looked like the wasatch would kind of be on the periphery and and that's still very much the case today this just kind of slides right down through um, the east side of the central and northern rockies here's your timeline best odds of accumulating snow for colorado tahoe utah idaho wyoming montana the pacific northwest and interior bc and there are far fewer dates that we're talking about today Colorado 23 light Tahoe 23 light Utah 23 light and then it's a real question mark I, I just don't see anything else down the road there through the end of the month um, Idaho you've got a couple of lights lights Wyoming lights Montana you kind of get the picture of what we're dealing with now in today's update I'm not going to show you the forecast radar because there's really nothing interesting to show you on it let's look at pressure anomalies up in the middle of the atmosphere so this is friday the 23rd so we're looking a little bit down the road here this would be that pattern pivot you can see the drop in pressures so on this particular type of map when you see the oranges and the reds um, that's your that represents higher than normal pressures where you see these blues and these greens those are lower than normal pressure so that's a drop in pressure across the west on the 23rd and that represents the colder the snowier um, potential change there but look what happens by the 26th it's like it didn't even exist we're back to uh, higher than normal pressures across the west and you might recall that this is what AI was really hinting at over the last few days that it would be a quick bounce back to higher than normal pressures and it looks like that might be the case um, this is the 28th, so even further out, and my goodness, we've really built the pressures up even more across the West. So it has taken a drier turn, um, most, most certainly in this forecast. How are we looking as far as the contrast for the 26th? So there's your operational. AI over here has a little bit of a weakening to the Northern Rockies, but still has... A lot of high pressure I mean there's nothing really dramatic that jumps out as far as wow that's gonna be a cold snowy pattern at all here I mean this in both cases is trending more towards higher pressure let's look at the uh, the nine-day total precip as if everything fell as rain 
I'm going to let this animate all the way out through the end of the 27th uh, into the 28th. And notice, I mean, you're really looking at a protective bubble, essentially, right here with high pressure. Yeah, some of the flow towards the end on the 23, 24, 25 time, time frame does bring in some precip to the Pacific Northwest and also down through Montana, Wyoming, and into Colorado. But there's very little in Utah through that time frame. Here's nine, eight, nine day uh, total snow, 10 to one ratio. Uh, again, there's not a lot here. Deep purple's at least six inches. Bright pink would be at least a foot. There's a little in Montana, a little in Wyoming, more in Colorado, very little, if anything, in Utah, and really nothing of significance across Oregon, California, Nevada. Let's look at the Southwest vantage point. So total precipitation, eight or nine days total. So by the end, it does start to draw in precip out of the Southwest around the 23rd, 24th, 25 time frame and that does appear to feed some decent moisture into southern Colorado and even New Mexico So that'll be interesting that does play into the forecast Here's the AI snow plume uh, Birthed past Colorado and Jackson Hole, Wyoming. This is a 10 to 15 day forecast So these are these would be grand totals according to our AI model here by the end of February 2nd about four and a half inches over Berthet Pass, about eight and a half inches for Jackson Hole. That's it. Most of it falls after the 23rd and on Berthet, and essentially after the 25th in Jackson Hole. So that's pretty sobering. Um, here's my official forecast. So today through the 22nd, fast north flow, and what you see in Colorado basically just happened early this morning. So that one to two inches is accountable. It, it, it's, it just happened. Uh, I mean, look at this. It is just striking to be able to sit here and say there is absolutely no snow for that corridor, that western corridor. Um, let's go to the 23rd through the 27th, and this has always been the most promising period, but even this period between 23 and 27 has taken a drier turn where we had 10s and 12s yesterday, now we've got 1s in the Tetons. We're down to 1 or 2 there across the Wasatch or on the periphery. Uh, interior BC, 2, 3, 4 inches. Uh, look, at, look at Oregon and Washington, and it may be that that corridor just stays too warm. Potentially 6 up in Whistler Blackcomb, but even that's not really much to write home about. And oftentimes when you see this contraction of the pattern, Alieska goes up, and indeed it did. At 20. So the most promising area is right here, southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, where we saw some of that moisture being drawn in 23, 24, 25, 26. That may translate into 6 to 12 inches through southern Colorado and also northern New Mexico. So it's just like where we, we saw the big numbers over the central mountain corridor of Colorado yesterday, all that has sort of been pulled to the south into southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. A little bit of a shift and a drier pattern, unfortunately, for a lot of the northern Rockies. All right, looking at uh, the northeast. So I, I talked about this yesterday, how there was that one big swath of snow with that storm, and it would likely shift, and it has. You can see the whole thing has shifted to the south at least 100, 200 miles. Um, so that changes things big time. But you're looking at a hefty lake effect off of Ontario, Erie, and Lake Michigan. Storm snow is pretty light through a lot of the, uh, the northeast. Here's my official forecast. This will take us all the way out through the close of business on the 27th. Six, J Peak, Tremblant, Whiteface, a foot at Snow Ridge from Lake Effect. Six over Mount Washington. And then everybody else is sort of in the three to five, three to six inch category there through the northeast. But it stays cold. That's one of the positives. Um, okay, let's end on the big western maps here. So again, today through the 22nd, this is already accountable. Um, and then the final is 123 through 127. Still holds the most promise, but um, things have shifted since yesterday. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.